Hey everybody and welcome to Chairman of the Board. Today I'm talking about a very small box abstract game called Kodinka. Now Kodinka plays two to four players, takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play and the game consists of a four by four grid made up of different tiles and um, those tiles are double-sided and you're basically trying to use your turns to manipulate that board by flipping tiles or moving tiles to make different patterns. And the first player to make four different patterns is the, uh, is the winner. Now, um, the, the actions that you take on your turn is either to move one of those tiles to an adjacent space, um, and then you can move another one, or you can flip two tiles, or you can move a tile and flip a tile. And as I said, everybody's using that grid communally, so constantly it's in, it's in flux. People are always moving things that you didn't want them to move, um, and so on. So you've got to really kind of carefully use those, um, you know, use those maneuvers to your advantage. Try not to give anything away. Try and steer your opponent's tiles away from what they want, and so on. So you've got a lot to consider here in a very simple framework of a game. Um, you know, the decisions are pretty interesting in a way because, as I said, you um, you're pretty limited in your options, but. Again, not only you've got to consider about what you're doing, but you want to consider about hurting your opponent as best as you can. And that's something that kind of worried me a bit about the game because I find that kind of mechanism a bit frustrating at times. Uh, I'm not the kind of biggest abstract fan in the world. There are a few I like, you know, I'm quite a fan of Santorini and I quite like um, On a Tamar and games like that. You know, they do have to be just right. So this one did kind of daunt me a little bit because I said I'm very hit and miss on abstract games, but. Surprisingly, I did like this game quite a bit. It's very simple in its, in its concept, which I, which I like. You've got those simple moves. Um, the frustration of um, you know, having that communal board didn't bother me too much, which I thought it would, because the grid is relatively small. And additionally, you get these additional um, actions you can take on your turn as almost like a bonus action, which can really help you manipulate that board and give you a bit of extra punch to kind of follow through on the moves you want to do. Um, for example, you can use um, a tile and shift it across the whole board, almost like a conveyor belt style, which wraps around to the, the other side. Or you can kind of rotate a whole group of um, tiles and kind of in a clockwise or I believe anti-clockwise fashion, which can really kind of manipulate the board to your favor. And you can also play the other side of those tiles, which completely almost like wash the board over with a certain formation of um, colors on those tiles. Because as I said, those tiles are double-sided as well. So not only are you trying to get the formation of tiles, you're also trying to get the right colors on those tiles. So, you know, that they do almost require a lot of manipulation to get what you want. Sometimes you can just fall into position and just, you know, things just work out in your favor. Um, but yeah, I, I actually did quite like the flow of the game. I think it did flow quite nicely. It didn't bog down as much as I thought it would. Um, and, you know, with a bit of clever thought, you can actually fulfill those different objectives quite quickly. Um, so yeah, I was, I was quite impressed about the way the way it actually did work more, better than I actually imagined it would. Um, again, I think the timestamp on it was just about right. I think you know, 20 to 30 minutes, it felt, it felt just on the money for me. I think maybe in a maybe in a two-player game it could bog down a bit more as you're trying to not only do what you want to do but constantly move your um, you know move your opponents into um, worse position. Um, but yeah, the the something I would consider as well is basically the different formations of um, of tiles that you need to do. Um, they can be harder than others. So sometimes the balance of the game can feel a little bit off because you know your opponent might have um, formations that are very simple to do. But don't get me wrong, all the shapes are the same. Everybody's trying to do the same formations, but the colors on those formations are different because some might say have two on the gold side and two on the white side, and some might say have them all just on the white side, which seems to be a bit easier in concept than, um, than some of the other versions. But in all, you know, the, the balance of the game is pretty good, but you guess you can get a bit lucky with those, um, with the different formation tiles that you draw. Um, Quality-wise, the component quality, I'm actually really impressed by this. It comes in a lovely, small, mag magnetized box. The tiles are nice and thick and chunky. Um, they, have that, they have that Azul style kind of plasticky feel to them. Um, and, but the cards themselves that kind of, um, you know, show the formations you need, they are very flimsy and almost feel very cheap. So a bit of hit and miss on the components. Um, I like the fact that when you do, you know, reveal your, on your turn, reveal the formation that you've completed, you have to show it to your opponents, but you can then flip it face down so that 
other players can't remember exactly the formations you've already completed. So you've got that bit of memory there as well. Um, so they can't just deliberately try and shaft you for the rest of the game because they're probably not going to remember what formations you actually need. Because you've got like a square you need, you need a bigger square, you need a diagonal, and I think you need a line as well. So four pretty simple concepts to do, but they do feel all very different. Um, and the replayability of the game is probably not great. Um, you probably play it a few times and you've almost kind of got your money's worth out of it. It's a very cheap game, very small game, almost more of a suitable for like traveling and stuff like that. You know, it's a game you could take on holiday and just play it in a chilled out kind of on a balcony or something like that. So for a game that you get to the kind of table, um, maybe not so often, at least not for me anyway. Um, but I'm glad I've played it and, you know, I did, I did enjoy it. Um, Uptime in the game is pretty good because I said you've only got those couple of options you can take on your turn and you can almost think about what you want to do on your turn. Obviously people are going to manipulate the board to, that will just naturally work against you but you can almost counteract that. I also like the fact that you, um, when somebody does a move, you can't just immediately reverse that move. So it stops that kind of stalemate um, feeling of the game that a lot of abstracts have and I, I do like that. Um, aesthetically, the game looks fine. It has that abstract feel to it. The tiles, again, the, the tiles almost like represent different elements. You've got four different bright colours. Colour blindness, tiny bit of an issue. The blue and purple are very similar in the game, um, but the, the actual images on the board or on the tiles are nice and clear, and you know, I do like them. Um, abstract game, absolutely no theme in this whatsoever, but who cares about that? Um, and also the setup and teardown time is absolute breeze as well. You've got the formation actually drawn on the box, so you can just bang the board, bang the board straight out, and um, you know just get going straight away. And there's no downtime and no setup whatsoever. And same with teardown as well. So yeah, overall, um, as I said, I'm not normally a big fan of abstracts, but this one I did enjoy. It's very low barrier to entry, not very daunting at all. It doesn't have that like horrible pressure that a lot of abstracts do, and I did I did quite enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, it's not, um, it's not a world beater, it's not a, you know, it's not a game changer, it's nothing like that. It's just a very simple concept, but completely inoffensive, and you know, I did enjoy it for what it was. Um, again, I'm not going to be screaming out to play it again and again, but you know, if someone does recommend it, I'll happily play it again, because the, the time frame, the time investment is not too daunting, and you can just get it out of the way pretty quickly, and it has a nice feel, of, feel and flow to it. So that's Kodinka. It gets an okay review for me, a verdict for me, which is on the positive side. Um, so, you know, it might sound worse than what it is, but that's, it clocks in about a six out of 10 for me, which feels right for me personally. So that's Kodinka. Uh, if you have enjoyed this review, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other reviews too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.